Um, okay, that's the Are only thing I know. Yeah, All we're right. good, we're good, we're <laughs> good. It's official. It is Karaoke Tuesday. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. Now, we know that Tuesday is one day in the week that doesn't have that high profile of Mondays and doesn't have that chill of Friday. But in its own way, it is just as impactful and we love it. Yeah. Yes, and just like the other days of the week, every day of the show has a theme. And on Tuesday, is all about the movie business. On that note, to welcome you to Nollywood Tuesday here on East Flash, your one-stop shop for everything entertainment. You know the conversation is totally incomplete without you catching on the fun and excitement at TVC Connect on Twitter and Instagram with the hashtag is Splash on TVC. All right, guys. Yes, yeah, settle in, settle in, settle in. It's your girl. It's your home girl. It's the host with the most. It's your girlfriend next door. My name, of course, it's on, it is Honeypot. Yeah. And of course, yes, it is the jewel in the crown. I was waiting for that. So it's not complete. We thought the jewel <laughs> in the crown. <laughs> we the crown. All right, guys. It's your girl, Amanda Dara. Today, you can call me Mandy. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, this is Roy and Essence Flanners. I go by the name King OJ. Well, you can call me OJ. That's what it is. Welcome to the show. Um, of course, on today's edition of the show, we have Entertainment News, which is a regular celebrity birthday shout-out, and then a quick lesson on entertainment history on Rewind. Not forget in Tweet View, where OJ will take us through some of the weird and crazy moments on social media. Then it'll be time for us to vent on the Tweet of segment, after which a recap of all that you might have missed in the news will suffice. Then, of course, Daily Top 5 will be up next with five Hollywood actors of Nigerian descent. And later, we'll bring you some movie talk on the Movies at the Movies segment. And where are they now? We'll be up shortly. Now, all of this and more mm -hmm. would happen right after this break. Let them know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fireboy, DML, and of course, Oxlade. So New you kids on the block. Like, New kids on the block. Yeah, but you think that that video is quite old I because so of his hairstyle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And even the feel of the video has this very different... From, you know, what's if I say, from jealous, yeah. and then seeing this, I'm not... Hmm. But they're doing very well. They're doing so, so well, because these days, you just know that you hear a tune, and the tune is so sweet. And you're wondering, I don't know this person. And then you just hear, it's a new guy on the block. Okay. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And these guys are killing it. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving swiftly on the show, let's start with the entertainment news. And Dede Mabiaku has a message for Naira Mali. Nigerian Afrobeat musician Dede Mabiaku has a message for singer Naira Mali and people comparing him to Fela Kuti. The veteran singer and Fela's protégé in a recent interview with Objective Media alleged that people behind the comparison should desist from such acts. Let's check out what Dede Mabiaku had to say. Comparing that young man to Abamieda, Fela, Nikola, Kuti, Joy, people, Egolin, Bebele. Why are you trivializing the essence of your matters? Why are you bringing down Abamir, Dafela, Nikola Kukuti? Why are you rubbishing the essence of him in this corridor of nothingness that is not supposed to be an issue? The boy, was he right in doing what he did? Ask yourselves. Ask yourselves. Ask yourselves. Somebody who in the edutain. Because in everything he did, his tortures were based on wanting to enlighten the people, wake up the minds of the people for the development of the society the right way round with respect and regard for our cultures and traditions. And that young man should now desist from letting his colleagues make him look like he is a fella wannabe. Because of the situation he has gone through. No, you are not a fella because of the situation you have gone through. You are not. The fella in you should wake up and make you realize that way to any boys. How many? Um, sh wow. Shout out to Object TV Media for mm -hmm. that particular clip. And of course, Dede Mabiaku has spoken. And it's a conversation people have been having. Because when Naramali got out of prison, he was doing the popular fella. Freedom, mm. yeah, raising up his hand. And <laughs> people have been saying, my guy, even in, a, in, a, in an interview, um, when Zlatan, Zlatan granted an interview, he said, ah, Naramali will be great. Look at the <laughs> likes of Nelson Mandela went to jail. <laughs> Look at the likes of, so I don't know, okay, man. So, so for me, I'm going to say, yes, he did go to jail. He must have experienced one or two things. But you can't compare 
what he went through to someone like Ifela. Like their stories are two different things entirely. Ifela is a legend. As, but the Malians, as the said, Malians don't get that. He was enlightening the youth on things that were happening. He was thinking about things that were happening in the society, in the economy. Now, you see Naira Mali, on the other hand, trivializing. He actually used the right word, trivializing these serious things, making it a joke, singing songs like, am I a Yahoo boy? Making it into a joke, something to play about. So I don't understand why he should even be compared to Fela in the first place at all. So, so I think that these boys are just um, confused. They don't know what it is, especially with the fact that, well, did they touch on it? And I've always said this, when they don't teach history in schools any longer, <laughs> this is what you have. So these guys do not even know their right. They just picked pieces, like they just picked stuff from people or people. So they don't really know. So they think that th this is how to become a fella. And did has said it all? I mean, I don't even have any other thing to say. They should just go and think about it because I don't know where we are headed, actually. Honestly because speaking. so many times when I think about this, situation I weep because I mean I weep for this generation really and I the do. funniest thing is that you know I saw this on a popular blog and I was reading through the comments and I was seeing that more of the younger crowd were saying oh we support Nara Mali we're with him he went through a lot he's the voice of the youth that fella and did, I'm fella did some what exactly what like exactly what? Like is stealing. he speaking about when he's talking to the if he's the voice of the youth what is he talking about what is he saying how is he representing us is he in the right way dropping a song am I your way I don't know I don't okay. know he just Sophie. I mean, I, I think we'll just move on from this. Uh, think about it. Think, think about it. Think. think. <laughs> All right. So let's move on. Ed Sheeran buys his neighbor's houses. Now, British singer Ed Sheeran has taken a huge step to avoid his neighbors from filing any noise complaint against him by buying their houses. According to reports, the singer, who's said to be worth 128 million pounds, reportedly bought the flat above his Notting Hill restaurant and the two houses next to his mansion in London. Also said Ed has not only made a wise investment, but is limiting the chance of people grumbling about loud music or parties. It was further guarded that he used the same plan for his restaurant in London, and these latest purchases have resulted in a property portfolio worth a reported £47 million. And locals have now nicknamed the area Sharan Villa because he owns so much property there. Mm -hmm. And this is a smart move. I love. What's, give, it, what's wrong with you? God, give me more news. <laughs> like my neighbor, in my neighbor, I say, my guy, you are making noise. <laughs> Like, oh my goodness. yeah, be because of the whole situation of noise pollution yeah, in Nigeria, yeah. you should not make noise. See, God, give me money. Let me just tell my neighbor. See, in, how much is this your like house worth? We're not so strict on such rules with noise pollution. It is. No, we it are. is. It is. Yes. So there was really? a time in Lagos yes. that if People you reported, are reporting churches so I don't know if, oh, yes, yes. Wow, that's yes. progress. <laughs> so there was a particular woman who actually mm. went to court on this. Um, a redeemed church was beside her house. It was um, in so Keja, if I can remember, it was in the news. And so she had always said that um, she was hypertensive and all that. So she had complained. They were not listening. So at the end of the day, they had to do this. It was in the news that time. Yeah. So, uh, yes, and I, I consider it too. So, I think that if you want to worship God, I'm not against it because I know that we can be very sentimental really in this part of the world. Don't put your so, speaker so, outside. So, so, do not. So, <laughs> imagine. So, there was one time I wrote an article on this. Mm -hmm. I was, um, we were still Radio Continental. It wasn't Max FM at that point. So, I'll do night and then close in the morning, 5 a.m., then I'm he heading out. So, mm -hmm. I'll take this Aladi Lola exit. Mm -hmm. And then there is always this woman I see standing in front of the house that is opposite this workplace. Mm -hmm. And so she would, uh, sh she reminded me of the late, um, what's, uh, what's his name? Uh, John, um, something, that comedian who passed away, mm -hmm. who had an accident. Okay. C.D. John. C.D. John, thank you. So, uh, you know, the way he talked about it, the way he sang and all that, so she would start with singing and then she would preach. She wow. had stuff, you know, she had this public address system. Mm. So I was always imagining myself going into that building. <laughs> I mean, if that was my house and then I just closed. So I you are just thinking yeah. that everybody wakes up in the morning and then they have the regular job. I do not do regular things. Mm. So I am mm. just closing and then I'm going to home to sleep and you're in front of my house preaching. Well, I mean, it's all good and fine as long as he compensated the people mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying, God, give me money so that so when that you don't make noise, I'll just say, my guy, I want to use your house. Come, I'll be going. Oh. I will double the money for you. 
No. If you don't want nice again, I got <laughs> That's you. That's a very good one. Congratulations to him. I mean, it's very smart to always invest in And it's investing too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so take a cue, Nigerian musicians. All right, moving on to some more news. Kylie Jenner unfollows Jordan Woods on Instagram. Now, Jordan Woods seems to be in trouble again with her former best friend, Kylie Jenner, after she was spotted with Khloe Kardashian's ex-boyfriend, James Harden. Now, according to sources, Jordan was spotted inside a bar smoking and dancing with Khloe Kardashian's ex-boyfriend, James Harden. Now, while some TMZ sources claim that it was an unplanned meeting, others alleged that Jordan and James have been hanging out for quite some months right now. So what now seems to be the last blow to Kylie Jenner's friendship with Jordan Woods led to Kylie taking to Instagram to unfollow her best friend forever. Now the strain on Jordan Woods and Kylie Jenner's relationship came after she was spotted with Chloe's other ex and baby daddy Tristan Thompson at a house party in Los Angeles in February. So I have a problem. I have many problems with so, this story. The, what is going this is, on? This is not even tri, um, Tristan. It's not the immediate boyfriend. So is it um, Jordan's fault now that... This is Chloe's ex, like it long is, I, I mean, ex. I understand where you're So she can't party with anybody again. There are rules. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They're unspoken rules. It's not something, it's not written in any book. Mm -hmm. But when you've been spotted with one ex, you had so much issues with it. I mean... I feel like Jordan should take a look. She should take some steps back and review what's going on. Now, how did we know Jordan Woods? We knew Jordan Woods because of Kylie, Kylie Jenner. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kylie Jenner's best friend. They have uh, a fashion, I think a makeup line together. They have businesses together. Now, this is someone that's put bread on your table. Now, you're spotted with her baby now. daddy. It's she not enough. Nigeria. Like, there are so many million. <laughs> she doesn't have her own. She came to Nigeria Don't to host a show. Nonsense on TV. She came to Nigeria to host a show. So she's big on her own right now. And she can't hang big, out with anybody. Big as what? Big she, as what? She came to host a show in Nigeria. They must okay, have paid so her a lot of Jordan money. Jordan Woods, what comes to your mind? Um. <laughs> That's my point, guys. Like, but, I feel on. like she should be very careful. So now, people always say no news is bad news, no bad news is, everything mm -hmm, is publicity mm -hmm. and stuff. But you have to watch the kind of brand they're building. Now, she's gradually building a brand of always being with Chloe's exes. And I think that that's is not the right bad, brand it, to build. Uh, is it anybody's fault that Chloe has plenty of exes? Uh, but, but the wow. thing is, I don't know. Lama will, will be next. <laughs> But, but, you know, people ask this question every time. Can you date your friend's ex? Oh, you know, yeah, and, 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 and people have different it. answers to it. Uh, once they don't have any business any longer, some people would say they would gladly do it. And some people would say, once you're, uh, you have tasted my ex, I mean, I, I, can't, have, I can't be eating the vomit or something of my mm -hmm. ex, and um, of my, you know, vomit friend's ex. Vomit. <laughs> or something, vomit. I don't know. So I, I think integrity is actually very important. Me, I don't know. I integrity is, is very, is very your, important. Your Best friend, elder sister's ex. Not immediate like, ex. Like, can you imagine me dating your elder sister's ex? I don't know. I think that that one is They're sickening. They're just out now. What yeah, is it just, but can they be friends? Yes, just no. saying, They can be friends. They're but just there's hanging so out, smoking and dancing. If it was really so cool, why did they have to be spotted? Why wasn't it something that she could post on? And Kylie now followed her. Like this is the of last. Course. I can't this take this like anymore. This is like the last straw, and I hope that her business and her brand keeps, you know, surviving through the market. She will survive. She will Hopefully. come to Nigeria again to host the show. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all we have on entertainment news. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with you, but yes. Moving on to our celebrity birthday shout outs. Now, today on our celebrity birthday shout outs is Austrian American politician, actor, filmmaker, and former professional bodybuilder. I'm talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger, guys. Yeah, Happy yeah, birthday. Commando. As in, yeah. like, Oh wow, this is a chip so he's much. Looking very good. Yes, and he's achieved so so much. Yeah, yeah, so from much. movies to politics, becoming a governor. Yes. like that's just great. Yes, so. yeah. Yes. Happy birthday to you. We Definitely. also have American actor, producer, and film director Lawrence Fishburne. Yes, popular for Matrix. Mm -hmm. Even John Wick. He's in John Wick. Yeah, uh, yeah. One, two, and three. I know. And he was in Ant Man as well. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yes, yes. You true remember that, now. Yeah, that, happy that. birthday to happy him. Birthday. And finally, we have American actor, comedian, and former American football player, Terry <laughs> Crews. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Terry Crews always make... It like, <laughs> he's, he's too... <laughs> I don't know, man. He's such it, a funny guy. Yeah. yeah. His vibe, actually. <laughs> like, just seeing his picture and then you're smiling. I know this is mine. Yeah. Like, uh, From Everybody Hates Chris. Chris yeah. Yeah. Like he was the father. You know, mm -hmm. It was so funny in that. So yes, happy birthday to him as well. And happy birthday to you, you and you that's having your birthday today. We love you so much. Mm -hmm. So happy we birthday. Make sure you have fun. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs>
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for Sweetville, and of course, this is Sweetville where we bring you all the savagey humor and crazy moments on social media. Yes, so, are you guys ready for this? Yeah, let's yes, get into we it. Are. Let's do this. So, Aramide put out, put out this tweet, and she said, "I so I paid 500 naira to enter Uniloro Zoo, only to discover that they have only one lion, <laughs> and the bastard was even sleeping." I mean, with 500 now, what were you? So what were you? Flamingos or what? <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> but but then, like, I would really like to see a flamingo. But, but really, to so even find a lion. That, that is, that that is strips, man. That was, that was mm. straight 500. That was, even too that was what people were saying under this particular tweet. They say, ah, you're even lucky. Zeus, this day, Me? You, even you go there, you are seeing goats. I'm telling you. You are seeing cow, you are seeing chicken. They say, welcome to our zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Which zoo have you been to? I've, I've been to a zoo in Anambra. Okay. So it's a private zoo. Oh, okay. I, I did not see lion. <laughs> I did not see lion, what but I, see? I I saw chimpanzee. I saw I saw I saw some. But I I think it's a popular um zoo in Anambra State. Okay. But it's privately owned. But I did not see lion. Mm. Well, I've been to you? one in Abuja. I saw a porcupine. I thought that was so cool. Wow, that's on I road saw um a <laughs> is it a buffalo? I think it's a buffalo. I saw a couple oh, of. Oh, I've been to another one too in, in Abuja. But I, I, I saw yeah. ostrich. Well, ostrich is like it's everywhere. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, I, um, fish. <laughs> I went to Elisha. I went to Elisha. I think Olashore. Uh, I mean, uh, th there's something. Uh, there, there was one. I saw ostrich. Mm. I saw. I mean, wow. so no lion. No and lion so they said I should be careful. Oh, I saw peacock. And, that's why and then I saw peacock too. I that's, saw peacock. That's why Aramde is angry now. That finally, I'm even seeing you one lion. One but lion. the guy is even still sleeping. Okay. What kind of rubbish is this? <laughs> so moving on, this tweet is from at Real Kwame Oti. And he said, I'm always living in constant fear of at real Donald Trump deporting my uncle, Mr. Kwaku Owusu, ah. who don't have papers and lives in 700 Brownie Road, Suite 11, City, West Collinswood, State, New Jersey, and he put the man's number. I'm always praying for you, uncle. Like, this guy just casted his the uncle. uncle. And kind he of... actually tweeted... At Donald he Trump. He might even Anna. Uh, with the full address. He must be having the same thing. So he's having constant fear of Donald Trump <laughs> deporting his uncle. With what you did, my guy. Everything that is coming to my mind. So let me tell mind you. Is swear. So swear for this you dude guy. knew what he was doing. Yes, yes he wasn't just being nice. <laughs> Maybe nice. he asked the uncle for something, for and then the, the uncle did not. And he knows the story of you know getting the into. The uncle been there. Uh -huh. uh, because no. wickedness. Coming from his Twitter and he's still he's in Ghana at the moment, so. Your uncle, Mr. Kwaku you know, Owusu, did not name, send you money. His son name, his, his address, address, his, his phone, phone number. number. You are a wicked and person. And he ended, he ended saying, I'm always praying for you, uncle. They would you know what? They would deport the, the uncle will soon be back in Ghana. <laughs> oh, God, savage. All right, what do we have next on Twitter? Yes. So somebody put up this post saying, cats crying by 1 a.m. Americans Oh, poor cat. <laughs> British. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. She must be cold. <laughs> Nigerians, you agents of darkness. Die by fire. Die by fire. I beg, Nigeria, you are in that boat. Nigeria cats are different. You are so in that boat because I said I wanted to get a cat. And every time, OJ is on my case. See, you are in this boat with them. You and were not because... around yesterday, so we did something <laughs> on Truth Syndrome Monday where we said, if you had 10 missed calls from your pastor, your friend, or whatever, who you call? So you say you call his pastor. And I want to find out if everything is okay spiritually. This one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something. But this is, this, this is a reg Nigerians would do this. You did thing. not even if know. If cat is even black, eh, that's a that's demon. Yeah. That's but, a demon. No, Guess but what? there's something yeah. creepy about cats. I must say, tell on I, the love, I love tell dogs, on the pot, yeah. but cats, yeah. You yeah. can see a stray cat on the road and be like, shoo! And the cat and will look at you like... No, because they're curious yeah. and they have is a mind it, of their own. Me no, I you? read about cats when I thought I wanted to have a cat. It's a lifetime, uh, you know, commitment. And they have a, uh, a mind of their own. They are not loyal. And, see, they are loyal. No. They are very loyal. Cats and they're so caring. Loyal. They are loyal. Uh, I'll tell you more about cats. And you're not even surprised that these Nigerians did not even say, uh, bush baby. It's a bush baby. <laughs> they, they even said because cats. Because somebody's auntie. They're not loyal. Yeah. I don't They're like loyal. Cats. They yeah. are. We love dogs. So yeah, yeah, well, I love cats. cats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out some more tweets. This is from Matt Mide Oseni, and he puts up a post with his picture saying, I know your boyfriend wishes to be like me. Wow. So this is him looking all swagged out. Then Alaji Roy is now said, because of EFCC jackets. Some people call these things on themselves. Kai. You too. Like, they didn't check the picture. But it's, like, this is swagged out now. Why do you call this EFCC jackets now? There is a very thin line between self-confidence <laughs> and trash. 
But this is you swag. Decide. This is swag now. This jacket is in vogue. And, but because it's red and it's looking like EFC's own shirt, so we don't blame Well, Alagi I mean, Royce. they say if nobody will blow your trumpets, blow it by yourself. So, it's Mide, all good. Mide, we are sorry. After it is your clothes. Yeah. Right you, on. Did they steal you? <laughs> <laughs> Mide, don't mind them. It us everywhere. Oh, we are supporting you. <laughs> so, our own very um, Nigerian artist is on this table. His name is Ice Prince Zamani. And he puts up a post on Twitter saying, Move at your own God given paste. Hmm. <laughs> hey, move hey. at your own God given paste. Hey. Over speeding kills even in your own lane. Kai. Then Dr. Olufumilayo now said, Very true. If you move at God's paste, nobody, nobody can, can brush you. you. <laughs> and I want to tell you what, it must have been. I still started to say paste. It must have been a typographical error. It Honestly, must have been autocorrect. I have to support it happens, him then. It happens. In fact, so the other day, I put up a post, and so I had to look at it again. Like, I like to reread what I. So I saw that, ah, for minutes, I wanted to write. That means when I was editing, or I mistakenly just yeah. erased. H. Mm -hmm. So I, I put H A S and I found A S. It, hey. it meant another thing. So people will say, ah, she's a Yoruba girl. Hey. And I tried to get in her head. She was like, ah, but, oh but, but Dr. Olifimlayo came, came through very correct with this reply. Honestly. If you move at God's pace, eh? Nobody can brush you. The message, so is still, the, flow. the message is still making sense. Yeah, I wanted to so say pace. Yeah, we're supporting Pun intended. Pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. So do we have one more or should we wrap this up? And because right. we even oh. have SLK, we even have SLK in the building. I mean, he, he does well with, uh, you know, playing <laughs> with wow. words. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for staying here with us. You know that we always have great show for you. And we have so much more for you today. We've got our friends in the studio. They are so talented. I mean, to say they're talented would be an understatement. Mm -hmm. uh, they're people you know so well. So they are comedians. We've got SLK and D1 in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you're going to be serious a bit on this <clears throat> set. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so it's the first time you're coming on this, our new sets. Could that be true? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? It's, it looks it's good. Really nice. Oh, thank the, you. The ambience. Thank it's you. It's really <laughs> lovely. Because I so, see you're just relaxing there. Yeah, yeah, Coffee, yeah, yeah. right? That's all right. It's like a lounge. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't even know when to believe you guys. Yeah, it, feels, it feels like a lounge. Can someone get me a drink, please? It, it wow. feels like... Don't worry, we'll get you a drink. Funny for okay. you ask for this. <laughs> <laughs> we get you a drink. Well done, guys. You mm. have been doing fantastically well. I mean, when I see you and I'm like, you know how to say, I know her, I know him. So I'm like, ah, I know it's okay, I know D1. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to start with D1. Yeah. So D1, I, I know that after Big Brother, I know that you don't like to be uh, um, called D1 X. or Big Brother because X. you are done yeah. with Big Brother. Yeah. But I think a lot of people wanted to ride on that exactly. uh, you know, platform. Yeah. So I wonder why that is for you. Well, um, you know, the platform is really big. When we came out, that was like the only thing people wanted to keep up with, you know? And that was why I did my show with um, that um, buzz. Mm. Mm. Do you want evicted? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and it was last year. It was, it was, it was good. I know you had one in Lagos, you had one in Abuja. Abuja, yeah. yeah. But yeah. How, was, how was the turnout for you? How would you say uh, it was, it was Big sold Brother out. affected your... It was sold out, wow. Yeah, it was. Fantastic. You know, I mean, they saw us on TV, mm. they wanted to see us in person, really? you know. So, I mean, that was what I just wrote on. Mm. Okay, before, okay. before we talk to SLK, which of the housemates... Because we see you on social media. One day, uh, <laughs> you're fighting with this particular... Your former Big Brother uh, mates. The other day you've settled. Which of these guys do you still communicate with? Everybody. Uh, yeah, so what, what the hell those things I even used to... I still had the house party on Sunday and, okay. you know, almost everybody was there. Alex, um, Teddy, Lulu, Anika. Mm -hmm. So is yeah. that supposed to be like, um, like a stunt? Like you're just mm -hmm. driving traffic to yourself no. by... Because one moment you're fighting, the next moment... Mm -hmm. No, no, don't make you look at me. Yeah, make it look like I'm a fighter. You get, I'm okay. not, I'm not a fighter. But the thing is, uh, my point of view sometimes might just not go well with people. Okay. You know, like, like, um, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's usually like the opposite of what most people want to mm. hear. And okay. you know, like when uh, Mali had his okay, arrest, okay. I, I was one of the. Yeah. I think I was the first person to congratulate the EFCC and say, "Oh, nice." <laughs> 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 wow. You get, and you know, definitely people will come like, "You're mad, you're stupid." <laughs> 
I've always been mad. Okay. Okay. Let's, okay, let's talk let's to you. You've been too yeah. quiet. Woo! Uh, Finally. Uh, tell us, I mean, from moving on from like Instagram, where we knew you for your skits and everything, and then doing stand up. Because that's where a lot of everybody knows you. Yeah, yeah, that's his major. Yeah, that's where he keeps from. I was actually there. That's the source of income, yeah. Don't mind me. He's not a shitty dude. No, I'm But on a more serious note, like you were very well known, or you are very well known for But I Was You on Instagram. I mean, that has been huge. And then doing this stand up comedy, I feel like. You know, what took you so long to start doing stand-up comedy? Because I was there at stand um, Thank God is Funny, and it was so good. Wow, thank you. First of all, by the way, most, most urban people mm. know me from Stand-up comedy, yeah. yeah. However, most, um, I don't want to say normal, but generally, I get, I get a lot of recognition from my stuff on TV, mm -hmm. my, my short films and my, my skits on TV. Mm -hmm. Then some other people know me I've always known me as a stand-up comedian, right from mm -hmm. school so, days. So, so, yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean, I've been, I've been on almost every major show in Nigeria um, doing stand-up. I've been on um, um, Stand-Up Nigeria. I've been on Rhythm Unplugged. I've been at loads of the ribs in Wembley, in the UK. So I've been doing stand-up comedy all through. So it's not new to me. However, I, because of what you mentioned, and because I know that it, a few people yeah. still think yeah. that yeah. I don't yeah. do stand-up, that was why one of the reasons I had to do Thank God I'm Funny. Okay. One of the reasons, anyways. And we, we, we shot it as a film, mm -hmm. making it Nigeria's first stand-up comedy special. Ooh! Wow. So nice I would really commend SLK. <clears throat> You know, um, there is a particular channel that shows your short film, Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've watched it, and every time I watch it, uh, I, I don't get tired of watching. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I saw different different talent. I saw D1, yeah. uh, you know, I, I with the public him, address he was, he was coming from a place where people hated him. So I, I, I just said, okay, you know what? Let me use my platform. He came to meet to me like, you. okay, so... Help help you, right? said, um, please, so, if you're listening to me right now, don't watch his film. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay, be serious, guys. So now I watch that and I'm like, ah, in fact, I think I sent a message to you and I'm like, ah, SLK, okay, well I'm done. Out, and now you went to TJF. Now it's the first time I'm seeing, I know that people say, come and watch my shows and mm -hmm. all that, but it's the first time I'm seeing people put the compilation of your works together and yeah. then taking it to the cinema. It's not, and it's that not is a what compilation of my works. Well, okay. It was actually my performance oh, yeah. at, my, at my show, which like the filming, I like to call mm -hmm. it the filming now, <laughs> since the movie is out. Uh, at the filming is the, a compilation. Is the sorry is my performance. Okay, okay. I did I did about one hour thirty minutes that day, but mm. we kind of compressed it to one hour forty. And it was minutes. a very good so one. So it's the first time I'm seeing that at the mm. movie. I mean, people, it's somebody first, taking yeah. it to the movie. So at first I was thinking, how is this going to work? Yeah. So I saw that you know a lot of people you were getting feedback Trust and then me, you... the feedback has been amazing. So what he did here, he doesn't want to tell you. What he did is when we were there at the event, he's like, no phones allowed. Yes. <laughs> so nobody could tape it. Yeah, so that's yeah. why it's still exclusive content. To yeah. him. So we're going to watch it later, right? All of us. Obviously, this evening. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought all of us a ticket. No, but, but, but I'm available. So oh. do, do yeah, always how, how, how has it been for you being a comedian in the Nigerian music, um, in the Nigeria and, comedy yeah. entertainment sphere? Yeah, it's, been, it been it's, been, it's been really smooth. The thing is, um, you know, for me, yeah, because of our background, I'm saying our uh, because of uh, SLK's uh, career also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of our, uh, you know, you know, you know the way people think. Um, people think comedians are usually ugly. Mm. They usually, Jewish yeah, they, exactly. Um, they must speak pigeon and be local and stuff. Mm. So we have our own, yeah, we have our own market, which is just quite different. Mm. You know, so it's easier to just. It might not, we might not, we might not be everywhere. But we're we're doing we're doing well in life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see all the shades flying all around. But I want to talk about I want to I talk about do. your views. I mean, you, your controversial views. I mean, yeah. last year, 2018, last year, you said uh, end of the year that Nigerians don't need electricity. And I read that and I'm like, okay, because he said we use the electricity to watch, to do meaningless stuff like yeah. watching TV and stuff. Yeah. And then you call out people often, but I want to talk about this. Nigerians not needing electricity. <laughs> Why do you think that we do not need electricity? So, so basically that statement was, um, was um, sarcasm. Hmm. It was an irony. Yeah, so I was, yeah, it was just, because I mean, I've traveled around, you know, and I understand that this is what we deserve. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But I wanted to shed light and not 
looked like I was attacking the government. You get. And I liked the buzz it had, you understand? And then people were facing me, you are mad, you are stupid. I'm like, I'm not the one. <laughs> I think that just, I think it goes to show the, the fact that the level we are when it comes to comedy. I think that, I thought that was the most blatant sarcasm you can ever see. Yeah. Mm. Like, that was very obvious. Like, it cracked me up. So yeah. I think what happened is people took it out of context. Exactly. Like, because, no, yeah. no, no, no. Like, exactly. They just, so they just, they just I don't even understand. It I was one of the most shocking. Like, like I had, I had a difficult time defending D1 in the house. <laughs> but that was the easiest thing to defend. I, I thought that yeah. was like a... Alibaba was really pissed. He <laughs> was, was angry <laughs> it, that people did not get that. It pissed me off that like, people were... Really? Like, he, he, you know, this, we studied literature. We had... Yeah, you know, was, yeah. Different stuff that he was not He was, he was, he was just trying to say that exactly. there is no logical re reason because for us not having like... Because if you just like, Google your name, you just see... Nigerian comedian D1 says that Nigerians mm -hmm. don't need electricity. Yeah. I'm like, wow. So, st still talking about this conversation, is there, is there a thin line that should be drawn right now for comedians? Because we saw what EBA did with the Lupita thing and people dragged EBA. Mm. Like, is there, is there an issue right now for comedians that you face that you can crack some jokes because of how sensitive it is? Are we getting to that phase? Well, for me, no. It just depends on what you sell and the intention. Okay. You see, like for what I did, I did not apologize. Okay. Do you understand? Because I, I mean, it was clear that, mm. you know, this was the intention and a, a few people got it and that was fine. And you fine weren't then. attacking anyone. Exactly. But now taking a cue from what you said, SLK, uh, you know, you said you, 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 had a, you had a hard time defending D1. Mm. Now I say that even when D1 was in the house and people were saying, oh, he's funny and all that. And then you'd always say that this is the funny guy I've ever known this that that it was like you were putting on a lot of effort telling people that mm, wait so this dude is funny I don't know what you guys are about so tell me about this tell me about your bond your friendship I mean okay so it's like this here um, truth be told I hate to say this here in his presence but he's actually the funniest guy I know I'm not saying it because he's my friend actually <laughs> I'm, I might not like him <laughs> like, I can't deny the father like funny yeah. This one can be a lot of things, but funny, I mean, this one can be a lot of things, but unfunny is not, it's no. so not, he's like the funniest guy I know personally. So he's funnier than you? He's the funniest guy I know personally. So he's funnier than you? He's the funniest guy I know personally. Let's <laughs> just be like that. If you watch Tangled and Funny, you will probably know. But oh, wow. <laughs> All right, guys, before we let them go, many people know that D1 and SOK have a very lovely friendship and very great comedy relationship that goes way back. So let's take a quick break to look at some of their works that they did together. That's a slap down with correct brain. Oh, wow. <laughs> the bread, spelt it. <laughs> yes. I did it Guys, you that are so brilliant. Brilliant. Mm. brilliant. Brilliant. Before we let them go, I've been wanting to ask you something. Now, how do you combine your religion? I mean, you're a Christian and, you know, because of your jokes are very, you know, clean. So how do you do it? Because I remember you also had an interview where you said that your mom accuses you yeah. of lying on stage. So how do you balance <laughs> your religion and your religion jokes? Or church, because you attend <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? Is it church or is it religion? I don't know. Don't mind you. Yeah. Just, your belief. Me. Yeah, OK, so this is it, yeah? Um, uh, I don't know how to answer this without going so religious. But I feel that as a Christian, you are not supposed to just you're not, you're called to the world. Mm. And so um, you just have to have you, you can have your career mm -hmm. and still be a good Christian. You just know what not to do. You, you, you should not, you, you should have values, mm. wherever you are, wherever you are. Like, I don't believe that, okay, I should be a gospel comedian, even though I know there are, but just the same way you can't say I'm a gospel accountant or I'm a mm. gospel economist. Mm. I, I don't see any reason why I should be called a gospel comedian. However, I have my values. I have some things I cannot do. I have some, some kind of jokes I cannot tell. Mm. Just personal value. And mm. that personal value comes from the fact that I, I have a faith that I, I have something I believe so in. So is it harder? Is it harder cracking clean jokes? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say I'm being myself. Nice. It's not hard to be yourself, is it? Good exactly. point, okay. good point. So before, before we wrap up, what do we look out for from Thank God I'm Funny? You're going to, from, especially from the reviews I've been getting, you're going to laugh, you're going to think, mm -hmm. you're going to experience something new. Like imagine going to the cinema just to watch stand-up comedy in a way that has not been done before. Okay. Oh, so do you want any show? So what, what are we looking forward to from you? Uh, is it that the one evicted is going to continue? 
Yeah, yeah. I have my um, show coming up this year, but it's not the one evicted anymore because they've evicted. Me. <laughs> <laughs> You've moved on. Yeah, yeah. No need remembering the past. It's quite painful. But the do you want show... the host or something? <laughs> <laughs> Is that something we should know? No, 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 no. no, no it's, um, it's, it's a joke. It's sarcasm. There are some things that. You see, you tell Nigerians we don't get sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> So why is so, it going to be called this um, time? Around? Always funny. 29th of September, Federal Palace, you know. One B, you are going to pay. Oh, I don't know, understand. No, 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 I'm just, so, I'm just you're... saying in general. Let's go, let's By go. By the way, I, I love your, your, your outfit. Thank really nice. you so much. You know that... Um, no, no, now. you're not going to start. No, 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 no. You're... This is a classic way. I know it's checkered, but you're not going I know, to start. I know, that body house can afford. Please do not start. Do you want to oh, not finish it? Oh, on our sides, you will see yourself. Don't mind the one there, a labor professor. Thank you very much, D1. No, <laughs> Thank you very much, D1 and SLK. Okay. okay, guys, that's all we can take on the first half of the show. Still to come, we have Entertainment News Recap, Daily Top 5, Movies at the Movies, and of course, Where Are They Now? See you on the flip side of one. <laughs> 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 All right, and there, it's, it's so melodious that you always have to sing to Reese, like, mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. All right. <laughs> so, so far, we've brought you entertainment news, tweet view, and our guest. And now it's time to tweet off in a minute or less. Uh, one of us will go on a vent bout. Ah, uh, yes, what's currently bothering us? So, it could be anything. Anything. I think I think you're in that spirit uh, today. Uh, no, honey. actually. Mm? So I see that it has fallen on my table. Mm. And I think that I've been so high on like um, you know, <laughs> gratitude yeah? and not <laughs> complaint. So now I'm thinking of what to complain about. So can I complain about our roads? And even if I complain about our roads, we've talked about this for so long. We like can, how? We can never can, can stop talking. We should continue to talk? Yeah. We can keep talking. So guys, I just fixed my shock, so <laughs> And I spent a lot, like, I, I had to... Going there. I had to, <laughs> I had, the mechanic had to break it down. Like, I had to fix a lot of things. Because before, you know how I used to do? If anything is wrong with my car, if I hear one sound, I'm going mm -hmm. to do it. But these days, I've grown so <laughs> thick skin that sometimes like I'm that. even praying before going out. Okay? <laughs> I pray that nothing will happen to me. So now that I have fixed it, I brought the list to... <laughs> because he had to break it down. I brought to OJ. Yeah. I went for Ladila. I said, what do you think about, should we call another mechanic to check whether yeah. this whether is, this is because I was, I was spending a lot. I mean, I, I spent close to, uh, so now some people will say, what can no, you say the because, figures, of, say the so because some people will say that their cars, it, the shocks alone. So I went for the car that I can afford. <laughs> that don't say I can maintain. No need, so, 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 <laughs> look at me, look at my life. The money that I'm supposed to be using. Oh so, God. and then these days, because you cannot be too careful, you know, when you have just done your shock, so you're, you're, mm. you're always very careful, like I don't want to get into this, mm -mm. but you cannot be too careful. The roads careful. are just terrible. So now I cannot think of very soon fixing mm. shocks again. So my advice to everybody that drives in Lagos, um, know the road you drive on, know the that route you drive on. Like there's a particular route I pass on a regular. Yeah, they fixed it, they fixed it over well, the weekend. you subconsciously they, drive like they're hosts. Yes, that's one. <laughs> then at times I just see some people speeding on that lane. I'm like, hmm. my guy, there's one nasty photo. Because me, I'm on this lane, I'm speeding, you two are speeding with me. And when they get there, they're not press me. <laughs> You like people what? car used to but scatter that's true, there. Actually. You know, know that there are some yes, roads know that your route. you today you pass you here, pass here, and then there was no portal, portal, and then tomorrow you see portal. How do you now? You keep observing by yeah. the day. Yeah. In fact, if you need to see the way I drive <laughs> in my street, I'm like zoom. Because zoom, you know everywhere. Eh, I know all the holes. I can't even name them. you just see us speeding. You see the person near me. In Terrible. my mind, my guy. It's slow no, down. No, when you see traffic, when you're heading to Surulere, is my route. So mm -hmm. I know every, I know even w when the road is like, it's looking good and then there are bombs, you know, mm -hmm. how in the middle of the yeah. road, if your car is not balanced well, all those roads that they will just patch, patch and then you'll be moving like this. If you're not speeding and the trailer is coming beside you, you can't get on that. <laughs> so I know all of this. Yeah, so shout, now, well, shout, we have to. Uh, shout Sorry out to the government. That. They're working on it. Yeah, they, yeah. Fix, they fixed that particular one I was talking about. Okay. So, yeah. And they're still fixing more. So. Just moving over. Okay, there. bye. Bye. You, you will not repair your shocks anytime soon. <laughs> okay, amen. Always good. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, it's time for a quick recap of the entertainment news. And of course, we talked about Dede Mabiaku having a message for Naira Mali and everybody. We told you Ed Sheeran buys his neighbor's houses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we also said that Kylie Jenner unfollows Jordan Woods on Instagram. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break right now and we'll be back with Daily Top 5. Don't go nowhere.
All right, welcome back, guys, to Entertainment Splash. It is now time for our Daily Top 5. Now, today's Daily Top 5 is all about Hollywood male actors of Nigerian descent. So let's go in. Now, the first on our list is Chiwetel Ejiofor. He's an English actor and writer renowned for his portrayal of Solomon Northup in the 2013 movie 12 Years a Slave, for which he received Academy Award and Golden Globe Award nominations, along with the BAFTA Award for Best Actor. Now, he's also known for playing Okwe in Dirty Pretty Things and and this Shakespearean trained actor has built up quite a strong reputation in the last few years on stage and on screen. Now, he co starred in blockbusters like 2012 uh, Salt and Love Actually, but Ejiofo is at his best in more artsy films like Children of Men, Half of a Yellow Sun, and American Gangster. Now, he was born to Nigerian parents of Igbo descent, Arinze and Obianuju Ejiofo. Yeah. And so this car, this car um, Chiwetel has on his head is when they came to Nigeria. Yeah. They had an accident, oh. yeah. And it's just funny that he still represents us one way or the other. Do you know what I thought you were and, about to say? That he yeah. played the role Scar in Lion King. <laughs> 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 well, uh, Which is, he, yeah, that is his true, latest true, work. True, so true. he has that been doing his latest work. Work. And you know how uh, people have this um, stuff about, you know, this mentality about coming back home. Yes. And then you come back home and then you have come an accident. And, mm. and you don't even want to make that journey yeah, again. But it's yeah. so funny that, well, it's so interesting mm. that these people are still saying, yeah, we're Nigerians. And he has a sister that is quite yes. popular too. Mm. But I think he has done very well for himself. I mean, he has been acting for like 23 years, so he has really built the portfolio, and every time his presence is massive. And being on Lion King, I mean, that is really it's, good. It's a feat, well. a great feat. Yeah. Yes, so we move on, and the second person is David Oyelowo. David Oyelowo is a classically trained stage actor who has moved on to become one of Hollywood's most sought after talent. He graduated from the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. David Oyelowo is famous for his performances in The Last King of Scotland, Jack Reacher, Selma, Gringo, and Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Now, David Oyelowo's father is from Oyo State, while his mother is from Edo State in Nigeria. <laughs> no. I remember watching him in Gringo. Like, uh, he actually <laughs> spoke Yoruba in Gringo. Like, yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did Oh, my you goodness. Speak Yoruba or speak their native yeah, they, dialect. But and it sounded funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like no, in... I think he's very close to it because of his father. Because yeah. uh, on, uh, recently on Trevor Noah, he did an interview where he was talking about yeah. his father and how they Influence, did that upbringing. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> the way he switched from this British accent, and you're like, hey, my dad. Because he brings in this Noah. I was just like, but literally. You know, Dying. For, we funny. are home. We know that the accent is still <laughs> always there. It's yeah. just like in um, Wakanda. Yeah. When people were trying to like do the, it was horrible. I don't think they got the accent in Wakanda, but I think he gets the, the, the Yoruba accent, especially very well. <laughs> All right, moving to the number three person on our list, Adewale Akinoye Agbaje. Yes, born and raised in London, England. Adewale Akinoye Agbaje began his career as a model in Milan. He graduated with a master's degree in law from London's prestigious King's College before moving to Los Angeles where he made the transition to acting. Fluent in several languages including English, the majestic actor who always gets the attention with his charismatic and often very physical roles is most famous for his portrayal of the peculiar Dr. Echo in Lost, which is Dr. Echo in Lost, <laughs> and of course Simon Adebisi in Oz. He was born in London to Nigerian parents of Yoruba origin. That Yorubas were ruling stuff. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No. <laughs> and, and of course, um, he has a new movie uh, right now um, that they're trying to push. That's Farmers yes. with Genevieve with and Genevieve Naji. And it's just great. These people still Saw do things trailer. outside. I yeah. thought it was They do these awesome. things outside. And of course, they're still coming back home to give back. Because at the end of the day, there is no place like home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people will not agree. Huh? Okay. No, because no. I actually think it's very good what they're doing because they're telling the Nigerian stories. Mm -hmm. Because the recent movie, Farming, was actually talking about uh, thousands of Nigerian children that Sold were asleep. to British. Yeah. people who are now taking care of them and everything. You're telling the Nigerian story and yet you're actually portraying a culture the right way. So I think they're doing a fantastic job. Do, 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 do you remember him from Lost? Because you watch the series Lost. Yes. Yeah! <laughs> I love him from Dr. Lost. Dr. Echo. He's <laughs> Dr. Echo, people. And how you think for a very long time that you are the only person who has watched it and nobody yes. is. I was asking my friends, have you watched Lost? I wanted to see something and they were like, it's been a long Lost. time. <laughs> it's been a long how time. can't you have watched Lost? 
Yeah, he did very well in that one. Moving on to the fourth person on our list, John Boyega. Now, John Adedayobi Boyega, Adi Boyega, known for playing Finn in Star Wars, The Force Awakens, he has risen to uh, prominence in his native United uh, Kingdom for his role of Moses in the 2011 sci-fi comedy film Attack the Block before attaining international recognition for his work. John Boyega is one of the biggest stars who gained much praise for his lead performance in the horror action flick Attack the Block. Now, in March 2012, Boyega was cast in the film adaptation of Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's book mm. Half of a Yellow Sun, and in January 2016, Boyega formed his own production company, Upper Room Entertainment Limited, which co-produced Pacific Rim Uprising. Now he's Yoruba, and his parents are Samson and Abigail Adeboyega. And of course, they're also preachers. <laughs> I think <laughs> you have to add that. I think I, John Boyega has done very, very well, well for himself. Mm -hmm. He's just 27 years old. He has starred in such big films like Star Wars. He produced he his own. Co -produced it was when I heard that one, the Pacific Rim what? Uprising. I'm like, wow, Boyega has got it to that Yes, level. and yeah. he even came back to Nigeria and then he was giving back because he yes. had he yes. had to tutor uh, some of the uh, yeah. artists that we have Producers, in Nigeria. Actors. Yes. Uh, it's, a it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Especially when you're giving back. Definitely. Yeah. So right. now let's get to the fifth a person. And this is uh, Kim K. Kazim. He is a British Nigerian actor best known for his work in the Stars television series Black Sales. K. Kazim was born in Lagos, Nigeria, where he spent his early years before his family relocated to London, England. Now he then moved to South Africa, where he became well known for film and television roles. Now, however, uh, it was his role as Georgie's Rutaganda in the critically acclaimed and Oscar-nominated film Hotel Rwanda, which brought him to international attention. Following the success of Hotel Rwanda, he relocated to Los Angeles, which brought a range of new opportunities his way. He was born in Lagos, Nigeria. I mean, look at this dude. I think there are some things you do, some projects you do that just take you places. His body of work in Hotel Rwanda was Great. amazing. It was superb. His acting was superb. He brought out the emotions. I think he did very well. That one is a classic. Yeah. And so yeah. I so, like him for so that. If, so this is me just moving aside. If any of those Nollywood producers are watching right now, in Nigeria, our accent is not the usual that you people always portray <laughs> everywhere. Because when they want to portray anybody from Africa, the accent must be... Yes, ladies and gentlemen. So, I am yes. I am ADBC from so it's like from Nigeria. Rwanda. That, yeah, yeah. That is not how everybody sounds, I beg. Is when you group Africa yeah, and you just think there is an African accent. <laughs> there is no African accent, no. there's a South I'm, African accent. Yeah, the bad man will speak as Even Yoruba in man. Nigeria we have like maybe yeah. so many See, accents. We have to tell them over and over, <laughs> over because over. a lot of people still think they say it. And I've corrected somebody, my friend who is an American, I've corrected him, but he would not listen. Or Maybe he forgets so soon. I'm so going to Africa. he says, I'm mm. coming to Africa. Will you bring me to Africa? And I'm like, ah. Where in Africa are you going Africa? to? Africa. I am in West Africa, Nigeria. Lagos, to be precise, my friend. He wants you to take him around Africa. No, he just said he's coming to a particular place. I know, but on a more serious note, I'm really happy that we have people who yeah, are Nigerian us, in true. Hollywood who are representing us well. Because trust you, uh, trust me, uh, in this 2019, there are still people who believe that we live in the bushes. Yeah, yes. true. And yes, in yes. Nigeria, even in Africa, we feel like uh, we're just jumping up and down with bananas. And yeah, they compare us to monkeys. I'm yeah. like, so how are you talking mm. to me? Because obviously, I'm using internet mm -hmm. to talk to you. So I'm very happy that they're yeah. representing us. I, I, I was watching a, um, an interview with Bonaboy on Breakfast Club and it was trying to set everything straight. Like, don't think that when you come to Africa, we're in classroom and you're seeing monkey and snake I passing around. That's it. That's it. The thing we're chilling with right surprised. here in America, we have many of these things in back there at all. And guess what? Those of them who know, they're always farms in us, especially mm. the white ladies. The one thing with Nigerian <laughs> men, Okay, that's the, that's the I'll drop you there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a break now to check out where are they now. And we'll be back with a guest joining us for Movies at the Movies. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Movies at the Movies. And of course, if you have plans to go to watch a movie, let's help you make up your mind with Movies at the Movies. And of course, I'm not doing this today alone. Uh, Mike is right here in the building. Mike from Wake Up Nigeria. Yeah, that they had their two-year anniversary. We didn't get cake or drinks, but mm -hmm. it's all right. Mike is in the building. <laughs> His watch is like 17 years. <laughs> like, 
you know what? You know what? So we didn't get cake or drink. So I don't know. We've not got anything. I, I do all the years you've been celebrating. I've not seen anything. We're too, we're too cool for that. We're, we're just young. We're just two. So <laughs> bear with us. We're learning. So we'll come along. Okay. Don't worry. I'll tell you the best thing. We'll get to you. Maybe sweet or something. Okay. Better. Forty year biscuit. <laughs> 50th cake. Drink. Okay. Ah, well, anyway. No, All right. No, no, you drink. <laughs> it's great to have you right here. Yeah, and of course, we'll be dissecting some movies. And of course, we're starting with Lion King. Yes, The Lion King is a 2019 American musical film directed and produced by John and produced by Walt Disney Pictures. It's a photorealistic computer animated remake of Disney's traditionally animated 1994 film of the same name. The film stars the voices of Donald Glover, Seth Rogen, Shiretta Legio for John Candy. John Oliver and of course Beyonce knows Carter as well as James L. Jones reprising his role from the original film. Let's check mm. this trailer out. That's my childhood right there. As in... So Mike, I've not seen this movie yet. Okay. Tell me, will I be impressed? Yeah, definitely. So I would have said spoiler free, but it's exactly the same thing okay. as the cartoon. So yeah, there's no spoilers. Like you know it, you know the mm -hmm. story. It's a live action remake. People said it's uh, National Geographic Wild. <laughs> well, at some point, it does look like that. But I tell you that, man, I felt it. It was a very good movie, very well made. They kept everything, apart from Beyonce's spirit. Yeah. Spirit is the only It was a soundtrack in the movie? Song, yes. Ah. Spirit was a soundtrack. That's the only thing. So every other thing was the same original, from Hakuna Matata, from... Please don't um, worry. Mm -hmm. From Circle of Life. In fact, the movie started with Circle of Life. Mm -hmm. Just So from the beginning, you get into the whole thing. Started with Circle of Life, uh, up until... So all your classics were yeah, there, yes. at the point where they were there, at the point where they were in the animated movie. Spirit was the only new one. And, man, Spirit made it for me. Spirit came in. Um, it came... Okay, I don't want to talk about the point where it came in, so yeah, let me not, let me not spoil that. But every other thing was as it was in... Um, the animated so, so, version. So I saw a conversation on social media, on Twitter to be precise. People mm. were talking about Beyonce's character. Did she nah, kill nah. it? She did. She did. I mean, at one, uh, so uh, now you know the roars from the lions are uh, sound effects. At some point, she also had that venom in her voice. She was like, oh. So it was cool. Nala, you know, um, Beyonce as Nala, she killed it. She did a very nice job. Great work. Okay, since it wasn't a cartoon like we used to know, it's a photorealistic animation, mm. did it do justice? They did. CGI was excellent. It was excellent. I mean, you, you, were, you were talking to, it was real animals here, man. It was excellent. They wow. did an excellent job. John Favre, of course, you know, um, he, he's, uh, for most of you that don't know, Happy Hogan, yeah. um, <laughs> Iron Man's butler and all of that. He also directed the first Iron Man. John Favre did a very wonderful job. He was scared, of course. This is a classic. Yes. Like, don't so want to spoil it. A number of people don't like it. A number of people be like, no, nah, we love it. But majorly, the reviews are very good. Tiwet Elogio 4 played Scar, Scar in place of Jeremy Irons, who played the original Scar. He did a great job. He brought the voice, he brought Scar to life. Of course, James L. L. Jones, Jones the they, could, they, they, they couldn't be anyone better. It had to be him, to you know. Him, so Bossa. James L. Jones, of course, did a wonderful job. Um, and of course, um, Childish Gambino, great job Seth there. Roger. You know, Seth Roger. <laughs> Timon and Pumba. They were the stars of the movie. Timon and Pumba made the movie. They were wow. the stars of the movie. Wow. So it was, it was a point. All right, let's check out the, num um, the other movie we have, Men in Black International. Yes, Men oh. in Black International. It's a 2019 American science fiction action comedy film directed by F. Gary Gray. It's a spin-off of the Men in Black film series, which is loosely based on the Malibu Marvel comic book series of the same name by Lowell Cunningham. Yes, the film stars Chris Emsworth, Tessa Thompson, Rebecca Ferguson, and Liam Neeson. The film has grossed over $250 million worldwide. Uh. So, Mike, we have a white Men in Black. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be Will Smith and Tommy Lee, but right now, um, uh, Chris Emsworth please and permit, Tessa Thompson. Permit my French piece of crap. Wow, you don't like it? Piece of crap. Terrible movie. <sighs> terrible movie. Terrible movie. Don't, man, don't look, wait until you can buy it when you maybe get the digital <laughs> copy or the Blu-ray comes out, man. Don't go waste money seeing this movie. But it's, it's still the men, sorry, is, is it the action? So, so you, don't, you don't come at me really? and then you hear, oh, I heard it from Michael, Mike said it was wonderful, I didn't see it. Oh, no. It's a piece of crap. Like, you messed up the original, yeah. the, the, the feel of the MIB. Yes, we know MIB has always been, you know, that fun, feel-good movie and all of that, and aliens doing crazy stuff and all of that. 
But this one, I mean, come on, okay, so they had good chemistry in um, Thor, right? You bring Tessa Thompson and then you bring Chris Hemsworth because they had good chemistry. What kind of casting is that? And then, okay, they had good chemistry. Let's put them together in another movie. People like to see them. And then you put them together and you bring up this... Is it the action? Or everything, the... everything about the movie. Wow. From the storyline, the plot, it was very, very weak. Basic, basic plot. But then, of course, we don't watch this movie because of the plot, right? Yeah, true. Okay, so... Let's see, let's go down to the action. At least let us have a feel and all of that. Tessa Thompson, okay, you know her sassiness, she was cool at some point and all of that. But Chris Hemsworth, man, it was just, it was very cheesy, man. Like <laughs> the lines, everything, it was really, <sighs> see, I, guys, I cringe. Like thinking about the movie makes me cringe. Don't take my word for it. If you, if you like Men in Black, Teko. please don't listen. Try it. I love Men in Black, come on, man. This is, we, we've followed it all through. Like you said, Will Smith, Tom Lee Jones, but this one was just out of it, man. Like, it just didn't make any sense. And then you brought two villains who, the moment I saw them, I knew they were dancers. <laughs> like, you just see the villains, and then, and then you see guys, the way they're walking, like, ah, oh, these guys, I don't see them before. Oh, these guys, they're dancers. And then they now go into, they now find a way to make them go into a club where they are trying to fight and battle, and then they start dancing. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right, guys, we'll take a break now, and we'll be back for a special The Movie Critic edition, where Mike Mexicano will still be my guest, and not just releasing this one. I'm not, I'm not releasing him yet, so we'll go on a quick break, and we'll be back for more. Keep it locked. Yes, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Wrapping up movies at the movies, we'll be talking about, yes, the po very popular Marvel studio has unveiled the fourth phase of his films and the movies lined up are looking interesting. Yes, some films we expected to see didn't make the cuts, though like Black Panther 2. Uh, yeah, they said there might be something else, but they have like a timeline for all their yeah, movies right timeline. now. Okay, so, so Mike, let's break it down. It, now, Marvel Phase 4. Yeah, Marvel Phase 4. Now, like you saw, that was Comic Con. San Diego Comic Con, SDCC, which is about the biggest, the original, the OG Comic Con in the world. And that's where big movies and all of that, they go to make uh, their good. big announcements and their unveilings and all of that. So yes, Marvel Phase 4. Marvel. Now we thought that Spider-Man um, Far From Home would yeah. be the beginning of Phase 4. But Spider-Man Far From Home is actually the end of Phase, phase three. 3. Now for those of you that don't really know, Marvel have released over 23 movies <laughs> and they're divided into phases, right? So phase one started, um, ended with Avengers, as it were. So phase one had Iron Man. It, it, it um, introduced the individual Avengers. Yeah. There was Hulk. Thor, there was Hulk, right? And so it brought the individual Avengers and ended with Avengers. That was phase one introduction. Phase two was more of less like evolution. It ended with Avengers Age of Ultron. Ultron. Right? So phase three was battle, reversing, you know, um, Thanos. what Thanos had already done and all that, and ended with, of course, um, Endgame. But then Spider Man Far From Home is something like a link between phase three and phase, phase four. four. But phase four is big. Like now, this is the biggest one. There's a lot of news going on, and some things have been confirmed, of course. Phase four will start off with Black Widow. Yeah. A solo movie is coming up Scarlett May Johansson. 2020. Scarlett Johansson, they've already started shooting. Production has started. That will begin phase four. Now, it will move into the Eternals, which is the big one. The Eternals has Salma Hayek and um, Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Now, the which is reports, strange. <laughs> no, no, it's not strange. I mean, um, Salma Hayek, of course, will play Ajax, and um, um, we're expecting that Ken Reeves would be in Eternals. Hmm. We don't yet know if it's impossible, but Kevin Feige has stated that, of course, they have been in talks with Ken Reeves, but they wanted to ensure that the best movie, you know, like, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal, who was Mysterio yeah, in, in uh, Far, From Home, Far From Home, he had also been talking with Marvel, but they wanted to wait for the perfect movie. That's what they're out. trying to do with Ken Reeves. So they said, Eternals, it might not be Eternals, so, but then there is a plan for Ken Reeves to come into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, but the biggest news Blade. has to be Blade. Blade, Blade. Mashallah Blade. Ali. Ali. Now, what I love about that story was that he called Feige and said, come, let's talk, man. I want to play Blade. <laughs> and Feige was like, uh, yes, you play Blade. I mean, come on, man. You're talking about a double, a double um, um, Oscar winner. You yeah, true. That's what he has two Oscars. From Green Book. You understand? Green Book. From Green Book and Moonlight. So, look, man. The thing about Blade now, so a lot of people went back like, why didn't you bring back Wesley Snipes? Snipes, right? So Wesley Snipes also had to come out. And from now, the, the thing now is that uh, Wesley Snipes has always been wanted to be a part of the MCU. Wesley Snipes is the first person that pushed the idea of Black Panther. Hmm. First person. Now, this was before the MCU developed to what it was now. Wesley Snipes had already started production, pre-production on Black Panther. But then due to, of course, 
things happened, things happened. It didn't go on then. So he had to chill, but he was the original Blade. And then, so when this one comes in on all of that, and it seemed like he was not gonna be part of the MCU. So but what he said was like, he supports it. He was like, okay, hey, MCU, you guys. He put up a tweet, some, some he, he didn't fully come out and say, oh, I love this, I love this, but he was more or less like, hey, come on, man. Do you think there's a way they can infuse him into yes. the Blades? There's a, there's, it is a gist flying around that he might play Whistler, who's supposed to be Blades, a kind of father figure. Yes, and in so, a Yeah. So there's there's that there's that there's that news floating around. So there are fans that are pushing for it. There's a petition online yeah. like, yeah. okay, you Blade, should please like Wesley Snipes should be, be back there. in the movie. Has to play this thing. But Maheshala Ali, great cast for that one. That's a big one. Can we talk about Black Panther? Black Panther not been on this list. Okay, first. so no, okay, no. So it's phase four, mm -hmm. right? It's not like it's not going to happen. Black Panther is two is definitely going to happen. Probably they're going to put it in phase five. Right? Mm -hmm. But then in phase four, it is definitely, there's, oh, there's going to be a Black Panther too. But then according to the timeline for the ones they release, these are the closest ones, right? To 2024. To 2024, of course. Then after that, of course, one other big one, of course, we're looking at Doctor Strange and the True. Multiverse of Madness. True. True. Doctor Strange, of course, would have Scarlet Witch. So they are going to be the two major figures there. We're looking forward to Doctor Strange too. Then, but the big news also is Disney Plus streaming services. Yeah. Now for Disney Plus streaming services, they're going to bring a whole slew of action movie heroes, right? There's going to be uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's going to be on Disney Plus. There's going to be um, WandaVision. Mm -hmm. WandaVision is going to be on Disney Plus. There's okay. going to be a What If. There's going to be Hawkeye. There's going to be Loki. Loki is also going to be we on Disney Plus. We thought Loki died. Okay, but if you remember, at God. Endgame, no, at Endgame, Loki, <laughs> at Endgame, Loki um, teleported with the Space Stone. Ugh. So Loki would explore that after he teleported with the Space Stone, Loki is going to, the, the, the the Loki series is going to explore what Loki did with that space to moving on from there. Which, which, which one in particular from this phase four are you really keeping okay, your fingers so, yes. The last one I did mention was um, Thor, Love yeah, and Thunder. Yeah. Now, of course, um, we're going to have um, a female Thor, Thor right? Um, she's going to play... Uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth is still going to be in the movie, mm -hmm. right? He's still going to be there. Well, he handed over to Tessa yes, Thompson. That, no, not, not um, Tessa Thompson. He's, uh, what's his chick now? What's the name? What's the name of the chick now? The chick where they got um, the um, the armor. Uh, the yeah, the armor from what's what's that, what's that name now? It's just keep my everybody. Don't come back now. So well, she's going to be the female for right, and then but he's still going to be there. So it's more or less like shared responsibility. She's going to be able to wield me on here, which is quite very cool. And uh, so yeah, we're looking we're looking forward to. So which one, which one are you looking out for? Uh, for me, for me. Uh, uh, how do I put it now? Oh, all of them. All of them. All of them. I don't, I don't have any favorite one. I want to see what they will do with the individuals, but then I'm looking forward to the series also. The Definitely. series, the ones that go on Disney Plus. I'm looking forward to them. Definitely. Yeah. Annie Pot and Amanda. <laughs> well done, Mike. Well done. Yeah. Let's okay. even leave Phase 4. We talked maybe, about Men in yeah, Black. Actually, yeah, Lion even King. Phase 4, I had to read a bit about it. So mm. I saw that, okay, we're talking about 2020, 2021 to 2024. Mm. 24. By to be way, honest, okay. I think Marvel is just, you know, Cashing milking out. this situation. Yeah. I'm by looking forward to Loki. But yeah, also... by the way, also, like, like we're talking about, um, we just know that Endgame just beat the record as the number one movie in the yeah. world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Highest grossing. It's it's, the so for today, from today, you can buy it online. The digital, digital copy is available. Don't go and download for free. Go and buy it. It's available. It's available. It's available. July 3rd. Yeah, today. So for them. Yeah. So now, uh, you talked about Lion King, and you said that Spirit mm. was the only song by Beyonce from, 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 from Beyonce's album. And then I said, oh, is that the reason why she had to copy Petit Noir <laughs> as, uh, you know, La Maison Noir, the <laughs> gift and the curse? Because people have been talking about this. Le Mans, oui, I mean, oui, yeah, oui. people have been talking about this. It, the videos are so similar because she re released a video yes, shortly after spirit. the yeah. Lion King came out, and uh, you know it's uh, it's breaking the internet right now. Yeah, yes. you know it was it was like she copied everything. Oh, Did you well, see it? Well, it happens. Think, it happens. It happens, man. But uh, her husband, husband way, also I, has done. revamping. She has a way of revamping already yeah. used stuff, already known okay. stuff. Okay, <laughs> so as they say that there is nothing new under <laughs> the sun, like people would always just copy. But guys, do not even forget to keep sending your music video requests to us. You know, just send them to us, a selfie video of you requesting your favorite song, and we'll play it on our selfie request segment on our Friday shows. Thank you. Okay, now, guys, well done. <laughs> we yes. have to go. Thank you, Mike, for coming. I enjoyed yep. that. It's always yeah. a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Fourth phase four. All right, All right. ladies and gentlemen, my name is OJ. Be appreciate yourself. Our time is done and dusted right here yes. on the show.
All right, and my name is Amanda Dara. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mwah. My name is Honey Pot. I am just going to have a lovely time in this checkered outfit that people are Senior, Olaya, <laughs> <laughs>